It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Yamaha Outboards, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Calls, Limwalker Game Calls, Wild Seasoning, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, and Scent Blocker. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight, a little warm October evening here in the middle of the week with none other than Danny DePaul. I'm sad. What are you sad about? It was a bad start of our week. You know what? It, it really was. And actually, let's just, I want to change the tenor for just a second. Exactly. I, um, I want to get this. Get this. We need to do this tonight. Yes. Uh, for those of you in the outdoor industry, you may or may not have heard this. Uh, close friend of ours, former sponsor of the show, uh, Nick Percy from Killer Food Plots, uh, lost his battle uh, with COVID this week. And that was last Sunday night, I do believe. It's been all over Facebook and everything. But uh, he was a heck of a guy, and we actually saw him. <laughs> we saw him at Woods and Water a month ago. A month ago. Actually, almost like a month to the day. Right, I exactly. Think. And it's one of those things we've talked to him countless number of times at ATA. Any show around here in Michigan, we've mm-hmm. talked to him. Like you said, sponsor of the show. Yep. Uh, he's been through everything. Yeah. Uh, getting Promoting his KFP, yep. Killer Food Plots company. Um, and then to get the news Friday... That the prayer warriors were needed on Facebook, and then Sunday night, Monday morning, when the post was made. Yeah, that he had passed. Sad. So uh, he was a warrior, man. He was strong as an ox, and uh, that's all I want to say about that. Just uh, say a prayer for his family and his friends, and uh, just you know, think about him if you get a chance to spend a few quiet moments this week. So absolutely, it stinks, man. It does. All right. So now let's carry on with the show. Let's let, you know what, how about we change it? And how about we go up North where it's of nice 61 degrees, uh, FM one twenty three up in Newberry, who is carrying the show. Uh, as you can see, it's getting dark. There's a, a car in a car going by. <laughs> There's a uh, car in Newberry. Tonight. Right. Um, we've talked about cedars up there. We hear it's good pizza. We got to try it. There's another car. Wow. Um, and they've got Deer Camp Coffee there. So Absolutely. Sh- big shout out to FM123 up there. That's right. Thanks for carrying the show for us. Now, to our sponsors. How about we talk about Buck Bates. Deer Camp, Buck Bates, brick and mortar store down in Sterling Heights, Michigan. Get over there at 15 and Dodge Park. Check them out. If you're doing some shopping, use the promo code UNJ20. You get 20% off your order at buckbates.com. Big shout out to Lincoln Roan over on the west side of the state. Uh, never too late to get your Packer Max in for Christmas. Uh, use the promo code UNJ25. You'll get $25 off your order there. Uh, JPO Game Calls. If he's on the show, him and Amy uh, is working his game calls. Uh, get 10% off UNJ10 for 10% off your order at JPO Game Calls. It's not too late to get one of those single-hand use grunt tubes. Not at all. Wildseasoning.com. Uh, UNJ2020 gets you 10% off your order for anything wild seasonings. Put it on whatever you're cooking. Even popcorn. I've been using it this weekend. Chicken. Chicken? Ah, gotcha. Absolutely. Uh, Deer Camp Coffee. Mike's having cold brew right now. Uh, you get 10% off your order, UNJ10. Get 10% off your order, DeerCampCoffee.com. Get on over there. Check it out. Like I said, the brick and mortar store is at 15 and Dodge Park in Sterling Heights, Michigan. And don't forget, we've got our own line of coffee as well. Absolutely. Check out our own line of coffee over there, UNJ Brew. And I've got my cold brew rocking tonight. You do. But speaking of rocking, how about we rock some PSE bows tonight? That's right. Let's just go ahead and get in with it here with our title sponsor of PSE Archery. We've got another, none other than Cade Tripoli, all the way from Tucson, Arizona. Cade, what is going on tonight? What's going on, guys? How are we doing? Hey, we're uh, waiting for this weather temperature change coming this weekend, hopefully to drop a little bit so we can get in the woods and maybe actually get the rain out of here. It's been wet. It's been hot. Yeah, that's not what you want. You need a cold front to come through to so get those deer moving for you guys. This will be the first big one that's pushed through the state uh, since archery season started here. So, uh, you know, but out there in Arizona, you guys are kind of used to the heat out there. I know Bobby Vargas always told us he was shoveling sunshine. 
Oh, 24-7. You know, it's like living in an oven is what I like to say. Yeah, yeah. That's what it feels like right now here in October. It's been, well, it's 77 today. It was it was warm today before the front came through. Absolutely. You know, and that's one of the things here in Michigan. When we get a front to come through, it gets cold. Out there in Arizona, it probably gets more sunshine or something like that. Oh, yeah, right? something crazy. Right? <laughs> All right, Cade. It is the first time you are on the Up North Journal podcast. So what we need to do, first of all, is find out who you are. You know, we, we talked to you at ATA. We met you a couple years ago. But now it's the first time on. And we want to get a little bit to know Cade. And, and tell us about yourself. So, uh, so Cade, myself, I'm from a small town in Southern California. Grew up in a ski resort area. And then um, went off to college, uh, tore my ACL. My good buddy at the time was the general manager of an archery store. So he said, hey, dude, you, I know you just got surgery, so you got nothing to do. Why don't you just come, you know, clean the bathrooms or work on bows or do whatever you need to do to get by. Started doing that, jumped right into it, um, got a new bow at the time compared to what I had. And then just from then on, just took off in the archery world, just started hunting more and more and more. And then went up to uh, Northern California to Chico to where I got my bachelor's degree, worked at Deer Creek Archery, uh, a great archery store up there, and then just continued working as I got my bachelor's degree. And then once I graduated, um, I kind of had an in or knew some people at PSC, and it just kind of worked out. And then from there on, just been steady getting after it and working hard and hunting just as hard as many as much and as many times as I can. So where did you start in PSC? Where did you, where, where, what was your entry job there? So I initially started as, uh, it was just a inside sales rep, essentially, I guess what you could call it, and had uh, helped along and had a territory of eight states that I assisted with, uh, Colorado, New Mexico, uh, Montana, Idaho, Utah. So just kind of doing that. And then since I was in-house already, just kind of fell into doing all the marketing stuff. Every time we would do a photo shoot with uh, target shooters or hunters that would come in. And then just kind of gradually evolved more into the marketing stuff as we branched off and went into a different sales um, course or pattern. Yeah, you mentioned that uh, you worked there in the archery shop. Were you primarily a hunter at the time, or do you also do target shooting? So mostly just hunting. I am a target shooter. I do like going out. But to be honest with you and Frank, I'd rather shoot real animals than go out and shoot <laughs> uh, 20 yards. Um but, you know, I still enjoy doing that, but I'm, I'm more of a hunter than going out and shooting 3D targets or um, paper. So, so you go up against uh, Bobby every once in a while, every, every once in a while, lunch hour, and have a head-to-head competition over uh, yeah, lunch? Yeah, he owes me a lemonade or two from how many times I've uh, beat him. Oh! <laughs> well, you know that's going to come back to haunt him, so we'll get him on that one. But uh, that's awesome. You know, it's one of those things, you're into the company, and now you're uh, in the, the partnerships as well. Um, you know, in... Being, I know, being with Pete Shepley and, and how that all works out there, and we being with PSE for the years that we have been, you know, how's how's the with all this stuff going on? How's how's the the company doing? Have you guys fully moved? Uh, we have not moved yet, so everything's still in Tucson. Everything's still coming out of here. Um, we have another three and a half years in the building that the factory that we've had that everyone's known or come accustomed to just downgraded as opposed to having the full factory factory we now have half the factory so still here um can't quite disclose on where we're going to or what the next move is but um to your point or your question yep still in tucson all right you know it's one of those things hey it's going good don't fix it it's not yeah, broke. Exactly. it's not broke no. right on there you go so you like what's your favorite game you like to hunt the hunt obviously you don't like the dots so you can't hunt dots <laughs> It's not that I don't like them. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I don't like about it. But so I would say mule deer, the challenge of mule deer. I've never, I'll be frank and honest. I've never had my own elk tag. Um, I've been on multiple elk hunts that were successful. I've just never had my own tag. So now I can't say that elk, hunting elk is my personal favorite just because I've never had my own elk tag. So with that, I would have to say 100% um, mule deer. Coos deer is challenging as all heck, but I like a, I like mule deer. I'd say probably over coos deer. Have you hunted whitetail? I have, yeah. No, okay. I haven't shot one yet with the bow, but I have shot one with the rifle. So Okay. Awesome. Awesome. It's just one of those things, getting that elk tag. You, you Do you have a pref- preference of where you want to get it? Is there like a state, like, you know, some people, they, oh, I want to go out to Colorado or they want to go out to Wyoming or what were you, or would you like to just stay in Arizona? 
So the so I would love to draw an Arizona tag just because it's the home state. And then I grew up in California, so I would love to go hunt the tule elk that are in California um, or go up to Montana. Montana is probably my dream state to go. If I could just pick, you know, spend an unlimited amount of money and go do it right, I would probably pick Montana. Just I just love Montana. So is the the tule elk in California are are those the ones that are out on an island or not? No, I know. May I mean possibly? I'm not that I know of or I'm aware of. I know they're in Northern California, and then there's a, a decent herd that's by Mammoth. Okay, um, I had read something one time, and I thought it, uh, maybe I'm mistaken, but I thought it was maybe Tule. They had uh, like a herd out on an island somewhere in in the just off the off the coast of California, and it was like a preserve in case something were to happen. They they had a place that they they could get breeding stock from. And I, I, I can't remember if it was the Thule or not, but that, that kind of rings a bell though, for some reason. Just wondering. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's quite possible there's some Thule elk on like Catalina Island or something like that. Okay, all right. Well, it seems Joe Rogan just got one out in California, so you need to tap on his shoulder and say, hey, where did you get yours? <laughs> you know, he was with, uh, it sounds like he was with uh, Dudley out there in California, and they, he, he got one. So and he, he Is did. that it right there? That's Joe Rogan's elk right there. Put that, I'm going to bring that up on the web here. All right. Yeah, a, he shot a great bull. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he did. Wow. Yeah, he did. <laughs> that thing's got some back scratchers. Right? Wow. I mean, definitely a, a nice bull there. He was with John when he shot that? I, I think so. Okay. I'm not sure, but uh, speaking of that, just to tease everybody in the first segment, we'll just go right off the bat. Next Tuesday... They are going to be releasing uh, a PSE bow uh, on Tuesday. I don't know. Is there a specific time that they're going to release? Uh, we haven't uh, nailed that down yet. Okay. I, would, I would probably assume there's going to be an all-day different kind of segments rolling out. Okay. But, so know. stay tuned. Next Tuesday, new bow from PSE coming out. Did did they uh, did they leak the name out this week on, on a little tease? They did. So I believe uh, John posted on his Instagram, Levitate. So... As far as I'm aware of, it'll be the uh, the levitate is the name of the bow. Okay, a bow that can help us levitate, maybe. <laughs> That's I'm, what I need to I'm, I'm all, levitate into the stand. I'm all about that. <laughs> come on now. Right on. Uh, I tell you what, we're bumping up here close to our first break. We come back, uh, we'll shift gears a little bit. We'll talk maybe about some bows and things of that nature and, and what's uh, what you guys have got in the lineup for this year. So uh, we'll step outside real quick, take care of this break, and we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at psearchery.com. Three, two, and one. Welcome back. Second segment of the show. Sitting here talking with Cade about PSC, all good things PSC, and uh, we had some good stuff come out this year. Cade, the the EVL. Um, I've got my thirty two sitting here behind me, and uh, when, before we started the show, you said you like the thirty four. I do. I I would argue against anyone and say the Evo EVL, both the thirty two and the thirty four. Me specifically, I think the 34 is hands down the best hunting bow ever ever built and ever made. You know, and we say it every year, you know, it, it gets better and gets better. At what point does it stop? You know, and that's the thing about you guys. You guys listen to the customers, figure out what, what we're asking for, uh, you know, make little changes here or there, whatever, to help further that progression along. It seems like every year you guys just knock it out of the park every single year. Well, yeah, that's that's kudos to a lot to our engineers. Our engineers, um, they're just the best in the business, really, when it comes down to it. The stuff that they can come up with and engineer and design and then actually put out for everyone to, you know, try and use is just, it's incredible. Well, have you got, uh, have you got your EVL there behind you? Yeah, let me grab it real quick. I got mine here. Danny, right. you left yours at home, I take it. I did leave mine at home. 
He's got a 34. There was no reason to bring yours then, I guess, was Absolutely. There? Well, yep. what, go ahead and run it on down here, Boris. Let us know the ins and outs of uh, top to bottom on it. On on the bow itself or how I have my bow set up? Uh, well, let's do the bow itself, then we'll talk about how you've got your set up. So, with, yeah, so for the audience, if they're not aware or not, but you got the Evo EVL. It comes in a 32 axle axle and a 34 axle axle. The 34 axle axle, we offer it with the SE cam and the EC cam. The EC cams are bigger, well known, um, evolved cam. Um, so, the EC cam being bigger, it offers a, uh, a bigger draw length. It goes to, I believe, 31 and a half. And then the SE cam only goes to 30. So, if you're kind of in the ballpark in the middle of the EC cam, the SC cam is going to have great efficiency for you and, you know, generate those speeds. Um, myself being 6'2 with about a 30 and a half, 31 inch draw, I generally graduate or, or you know, <clears throat> excuse me, graduate, go to the EC cam. So um, that's what I, that's what I like. The, e, the EVL 34, it's, 4.7 pounds, so it's right there in the middle of everyone in the industry, Hoyt and Matthews, all aluminum bows. We offer it in the 60, 65, 70, and 80 pounds. Um, I shoot 70. That's really, to me, all you need, even 60. Um, but there's people in the industry like Rogan, like Dudley, like Cameron Haynes that like to shoot the heavier poundages, so right. got to be able to offer that. <clears throat> we offer it in a couple different um, solid colors and multiple camo options. We got Cudi Verde, First Light Fusion, Masio Country, uh, solid color like this one is tan. So I got some bad lighting in here. <laughs> um, black as well. So um, hands down, it has everything. And if you, for all the folks, I know a lot of Midwestern people and um, myself in the past years shot the QAD. And then now they have the QAD integrate rest and we have the mounting um, for it. So all things great on this bow. There's really not a lot you can complain about. How do you like the hand feel? So, do you guys use it with the rubber on there, or do you take the rubber off and shoot it just riser? I've got mine with the rubber hand grip on it. So, I used to, I I personally like just the riser, um, but 100% when it gets colder, I'll put the rubber on. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why you prefer the, the bare riser over just shooting with the rubber all the time? The reason why I prefer it may be wrong or, or correct, it's just there's less in my hand. So I feel I can get it right on that meaty, meaty part of your thumb right here. So I, it just feels more connected to the bow, if that's the right way to put it. Okay, so so you're looking for a thinner type grip to get the feel in, as we call the meaty of the hand. Whereas yep. I like to feel like the, I, I guess the fullness of it, the... The, in the same part, obviously, it's it, we're looking for the same kind of feel, but you get it off of a different way, being a bear, as opposed to having the rubber on, which is kind of cool. And and I know other people like to really feel like a, a really fat, like an old dart and wood, yep. wood handle type thickness, or mm-hmm. like you going right down to the bare metal. Well, for me, it's the tackiness of that rubber. It's it's more about you know uh, just a, a good solid grip, not grip, but the grip itself, you know, feeling solid, not sliding on your hand or a glove if it's cold. It, it, to me, it's just, it's a good solid contact. And that's what I like about, about that grip, like you were saying, when it gets colder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, and, and that axle to axle at 34, uh, you're looking at speeds coming off the bow. I, it was rated at 338. Uh, have you run your arrows through it to know where you're coming yeah, so my arrows cut right at about 29 and three quarters. It weighs 450 grains, and I'm shooting it at 301 feet a second on the dot. There you go, and that, and so you're shooting like 200 faster than Bobby. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Bobby does, you know. <laughs> oh, who man. knows what that kid's doing? These days. Somebody, yeah. Somebody's getting a call in the morning. <laughs> he's not here to defend himself <laughs> no he's not yeah. and, and and so speaking of the 34 to the 32 uh um, we're looking at the website right now the 32 if you like a smaller axle to axle like mike's got goes anywhere from 341 to 345 depending on your arrow setup and there's only a two ounce difference between the two bows so basically an ounce yeah an inch yeah Right. So when you're shooting that like that, um, now 
Are you shooting a thumb release or finger trigger? Finger, finger trigger. <laughs> yeah, so I shoot. I shoot. Yeah, trigger a finger trigger. Um, and the reason for that is I'm, you know, be the first one to say I'm not a professional shooter. I definitely punch the trigger here and there, and I'm more I'm more consistent under pressure on an animal punching the trigger with my finger as opposed to a thumb button so that so i hunt i hunt with the trigger and i usually target shoot with the thumb button okay that's awesome you know it, well it's it's truthful right you you understand what you're you know what you're about and that's what it is now uh for me i got the 34 myself but i'm going to use that in the winter time in the winter leagues to shoot at those wonderful dots that don't move and so that's why I got the 34. Mike got the 32 because you like the shorter axle to axle. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I prefer that just in the tree stand of having uh, less item there to get in the way of anything. Like maybe uh, if I got the shooting rail up, you know, however I'm set up and what tree stand I'm in. Uh, you know, I fell in love with that 28 a couple of years back because it was really short. Uh, but I tell you what, this thing is a dream to shoot. You know, and the thing that really impressed me about it, Cade, was... When we got out to Sunrise Archery to set up, I mean, Danny can attest to this because he had his setup, I think, the week before I did. It set up so quick and so easy. I mean, we put all the stuff, we put the rest on it, we put the sight system on it, and got the everything set up uh, level and true, and bang. I mean, almost almost the first shot, it was, it was almost a perfect bullet hole. It was so minor that we made a minor adjustment. Before you know it, we're, we're tearing bullet holes with these things. Yeah, that's uh, mine was very similar to set up. You know, there's a, there's those one offs that come out of the box and they're wrong, but I would agree with you and say that they're very easy to tune and very simple coming out of the box. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's a very simple system to tune it in. So speaking of that, what rest are you? So go over the rest of your bow. Now that we've, we've talked about, Oh, before we leave the EVO, uh, what's the price range we're talking for the 32, 34? Off the top of my head, is it fifteen ninety nine? No, that's the carbon. Fourteen ninety nine or thirteen ninety nine? I can't quite remember off the top of my head. I should know that. I apologize to everyone out there for not knowing that. You gotta go to the website and check it out, and then head over to your local dealer. Right, and these are the Probos, so you're only gonna find them in the dealer. So you gotta go over to a dealer and shot. I had a friend of mine call me up and says, "Hey, I'm looking for a new bow. I got him over to to um, Sunrise." I almost said the other place. Um, and he shot, actually, they lined up a few bows. There was, and this is no lie, there was the PSE, there was a bear, and there was a Matthews. And he lined them all up, shot them all, and the best one he liked was the PSE. It was just for him. Mm -hmm. And, okay, that's what we tell everybody that asks us, you know, like, oh, what's the best bow out there? Well, it's the best bow that shoots good for you. Uh-huh. That's really it. You know, I, I'm biased as I am towards PSC. 100%. Everyone should buy a PSC, whether they like it or not. But <laughs> right. <laughs> um, if, when you do go into a store, it's it, the, the best way to put it. You know, it's similar to mountain bikes or or trucks and cars. It's you. You might go in thinking the Ford's the best, and then you hop in a Chevy, and then the, the Chevy is what it is for you. And same thing. You might go in thinking PSC is the best, and then you come out with the PSC. So, um, <laughs> right. No, nah, I'm just kidding. But yeah, it's it's like that. You, you just got to shoot what feels comfortable for you. If um, you know, if you if you like it and it's going to make you happy after you purchase, purchase it, then that's what you got to roll with. But um, exactly. there are definitely a lot of better bows if you are more. I wouldn't say advanced of a shooter, but if you've been behind a bow for a while, um, different bows are definitely better than others. Well, you you made Danny really happy doing the Ford Chevy comparison, seeing how he works for General Motors. <laughs> yeah, I, I like that one. Good follow that one. Yep. Oh. And, and so, go through the rest of your bow. We see it there. You got the the arrows on and everything. What 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 kind of rest you shooting with? And go on through that. So, um, just the other day, I just put this rest on, but I shoot the um, AAE Pro Drop limb driven rest. That's what I like to shoot. Um, any limb-driven rest, preferably to me, I'd, I'd prefer over a cable-driven rest. I shoot uh, a black gold sight. I shoot a um, one that's adjustable, a five-pin adjustable. I can get it. I think I was hitting out to 108 yards um, a couple of weeks ago. I'm shooting the AAE Mountain Series 
uh, stabilizers with uh, a back bar or their gripper mount so I can run a back bar so everyone can get to see a look of it. Um, I run a tight spot five arrow quiver and uh, she uh, gold tip arrows with AAE fletchings. So pretty much it's all AAE and then my sight is black gold. You know, you was talking uh, about a limb-driven rest. Danny and I both swapped over to limb-driven rest this year. Explain to people the difference between that and the cable-driven and, and why you might want to consider one of those. So, you you know, I'm not the most technically advanced person when it comes to all okay. this. Okay, I don't want to throw you under the bus. No, so I'm just going to tell the audience. So that way, if they make fun of me in the comments or, you know, if I go viral. So, <laughs> but so as far as I know, that with a cable driven wrist, it's not as efficient. So if you hit the back wall or you start to creep, your wrist is going to want to do that as well. Right. Whereas with a driven wrist, it, once you get to that fa- back all the way, it's not going to have as much play. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as I know, that's like the main or the biggest thing. I could be incorrect. If someone wants to chime in, they definitely should. No, um, that, that's a, that's a correct statement. Uh, Vaughn, uh, Derek over at uh, Sunrise ex- ex- explained it pretty much exactly like how you did when we were looking at them, and we we're going over from the cable driven, and he's and I and I've always seen them. It's like so we asked him about, it and he that's the same one he shot for years. So we switched over this year, and so far. I have no complaints about it. Yeah, I love it. So, and then, um, it's silly, but I know with like a QAD and a ripcord, you just pop it up, you know, and your arrow's always right there. Mm-hmm. I guess I just like the fact that sometimes, you know, I forget to do that, but with a limb-driven, no matter where my arrow is, say it's on the AAE or this, for instance, this is a ham ski, I can just, my, if my arrow's knocked, all I got to do is draw back, and I know the arrow's going to lift up and fall down into the seat of the the blade whichever blades on there so again yep. i don't know to me it's just I, it's just the simplicity of knowing that my arrow is always going to lift and i don't got to click anything or hold it with my finger down it's just just there it is ready to go that was one of the for the first couple of times of me getting used to letting the bow pick up my arrow instead of like on the qad turning it up putting it into preload position right it was like oh, okay let the bow do it and it mm-hmm. would now it's okay, but at the first couple of times I was kind of nervous. No, not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's definitely something to get used to. So, but ever since shooting one, I've been shooting one for the last I would shoot. I don't know, I'd probably say three years. Um, no reason to go back. Um, um, I wouldn't if you know if I, that's what I needed to set up and that's what I had and everything. I would more than not shoot a, a QAD or a, um, like a ripcord great rest they, they both both companies make great rest oh so. no no i've, I've, I've shot both of them yeah, too, we, yeah we've shot them for years up until this year we just wanted to try something different just oh, like yeah. just like your site uh which black gold do you get so i believe it's the ascent vertic assault so just the, my pins aren't micro just just the housing is and i wish i would have got it the, the reversed way but okay because it's, it's a tank of a site and um yeah, so I can't speak highly enough of Black Gold and what they have to offer. This is my first year with a Black Gold site, and I'm I'm pretty ecstatic about it. And just I've been had a story today with uh, Derek over at Sunrise about uh, adjustable sites, and we'll have to have him on the show to explain that one. Right. But I tell you what, that site is just the Black Gold is just lights out. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to me, you know, I, the pins are super bright. I can see those super well. Like I said, it's built like a tank. Mine go through some pretty gnarly stuff on some of the hunts I go on. And if something does go awry with the bow, their customer service is just phenomenal. So, oh, cool, good to know because I want to. I want. Do you have a light on that site? I do not. Just bec- I don't think it's legal in Arizona, nor am I ever. Okay. I don't sit in peace. So my, my hunting is so much different than your guys' is I just – I don't. Okay. No problem at all. I tell you what. We're coming up on our second break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some other bows that are in the line that I got some questions on. All right. All right. We're going to take a step outside. We'll be right back after this. PSC Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now – the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. 
Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Talking bows. Third segment of the show. Uh, talking bows. And I tell you what, when we talk bows, it's, it's kind of an interesting thing that, you know, the the Evolve cam itself, mm-hmm. I think they have the basis of one of the best cams on the market, if not the best. Mm-hmm. It's just how much they tweak it a little bit to get whatever they, they do. And I tell you, it's kind of cool. Cool. <laughs> it makes it, the bow shoots better than I'm able to put it that way. Well, definitely. <laughs> it makes me look like I almost know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, Cade, you talked about uh, one of your wish ones going out to Montana, maybe doing some elk, uh, like a western style. Obviously, you're in Arizona, so you're out west. Um, talk a little bit about the carbon uh, bows that uh, PSE has, the lightweightness um, that they they offer just for that type of style hunting so that's those the, we make the best bow for our backpack hunter the carbon bow i believe it's coming in if you're on the website i can't get it to pull up i believe it's three and a half pounds so uh, I, I have the carbon air stealth mach one up and yes coming in at three and a half pounds so cool i was correct yeah <laughs> so three and a half pounds and like i said so it being all carbon the handles all carbon the grips carbon so the bow's not going to get cold for you um, it shoots lights out, um, comparable, it has the evolved cams on there. So you can shoot it and I can be a testament to it. You can shoot it out to a hundred yards and, um, Western hunting, you know, you may take a shot that's further than 60 yards. So having a bow that, you know, you can pack in, that's literally lightweight and run a back bar on it and, and be able to add that much weight if you prefer to and pack it in and then have the confidence also to shoot it when you're that far in, let's just say, you know, at a 40, 40 yard shot on a cliff, you know, at a mule deer, or you take a 80 yard shot on an elk that's in a meadow or something. So it's a really, it truly is the bow itself is a testament to a backpacker's uh, best bow you could honestly have. And also they're coming in relatively for the backpack at 32 and a half, um, a nicely fitting bow for the backpack. Mm-hmm. And you know, not only is it a great bow for the backpackers, but um, generally speaking, uh, women don't hold up as much mass weight as men do. Mm-hmm. Um, so a bow weighing three and a half pounds, um, is, it's a great bow for women as well. And our younger kids or older folks that, you know, that just can't hold up an aluminum bow due to the mass weight in the shoulder. It's a great shooting bow with the evolved cams and it's a lightweight. So, and then you can see on the screen here, as we're talking that they come in, uh, five ranges from 50, 60, a 65, a 70 and an 80. So like you said, if you're, if you can do that 50 pounds and you want a nice light bow to carry around and you don't get cold, if it's on the handle, if it, it gets cool, uh, uh, it would be a good one to go out and check out. So, and then, yeah, so I know we're talking about the carbons. Um, definitely for all the uh, folks listening and watching and everything, the what we have coming out later this year is going to be some pretty awesome stuff regarding carbon. So, ah, ah, so tease number two in the third segment. Stay tuned. More carbon <laughs> coming from PSE. 100%. There you go. That's awesome. W- w- time frame wise, are we looking like spring of 2022-ish? Uh, between, I'll just say between now and then. Between so, now and then. Okay. All right. So there you go. That's pretty specific. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Oh, my. So now with, with the carbon bows, you're talking about a little bit about the uh, lighter weights for uh, women or for older people or for kids, uh, you know, and you think, you know, what is the EVL command? That was 4.2 pounds. Is that right? Uh, you think. Who wants to say that? Yeah, It's, you know, you're only talking three quarters of a pound, but when you're talking that that's almost 25% of the weight of that bow. And mm-hmm. I know when we were at ATA and the first time I picked a carbon bow up, I was blown away at it really how much difference it really does make. And, and it does make a big difference when you, when you come into something like that, doesn't it? Oh, it's huge. Yeah. If, especially if you've just been picking up an aluminum bow your whole life or you, that's the, an aluminum bow is the first bow you pick up when you go into a dealer and then you go, you go and you grab a, our carbon Mach one, excuse me. 
Uh, yeah, it's astronomical, the difference in how, how incredible it feels to pick up a three and a half pound bow. You know, to shift gears just a little bit, you know, we, we talked, touched just a, a little bit. I asked you about target bow. Is there, if you shot target, do you have anything there uh, behind you? Is the newer, one of the newer target bows that you'd like to talk about? Um, I do n- not with me. I wish uh, I had to do some, some stuff to, I was putting on all my accessories on my super RTX, but our new super RTX uh, target bow, I think is, you know, it falls in the line with our supers that we've had in the past. Mm-hmm. And it's one of Kyle Douglas's favorite, favorite bows. Um, and I've gotten a chance to shoot the, the super RTX 40 a little bit here and there. And I can't rave about it enough. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. So the, so the super RTX, is coming in at 37 and you said there's a, a 40 as well yes the, that is correct yep a 40 as well now for the target archers that are looking for that nice long axle axle that 40 inch uh it only comes in at five pounds as well so you know and that comes in at various various colors as well various colors and then um what people know psc about especially with our target line um i believe both bows we offer them in the em cam and the SE cam, so for our the target people who like our EM cam and everything. So, right, exactly. So that's another bow you want to get out uh, if you can get if your dealer has one for target archery. Go ahead and shoot that one if you're thinking about getting into target archery. It's a great bow. Um, I think we shot that one, um, but uh, it's just one of those things you got to get out and try these bows. That's one of the most important things that we can't stress enough about. We talk about them, but until you shoot them, you're not gonna. Don't don't trust what we say. That's right. Go out and put put one in your hand and get to your local dealer and actually shoot these things and you'll understand what we're talking about. Uh, while we're sitting here talking about the target lineup, I remember something that Pete Shepley told us. Uh, I think it was two years ago about wanting to get more people into target archery, and he said it's easier to take a target archer and make them a hunter versus taking a hunter like us and make them a target archer. And with that in mind. And somebody's like, well, I'd like to try it, but, you know, I, I just don't want to spend, you know, a lot of money on, on a target bow and getting it all set up and to only find out whether I do or don't like it. You know, it's just, it's a big initial investment. Uh, what's one of the, like an entry level target bow that somebody could have some confidence with and get out and have some fun with as well? You know, if, and like if they, per, you know, just wanted to start and primarily just shoot, you know, targets, mm-hmm. I would say like a stinger is a great bow. Yeah, I know it's not a target target bow Mm -hmm. um but you know it's something you know you can (coughs) recreationally shoot you can just you know pound pound paper if that's all you wanted to do and then if you wanted to hunt with it you could but if you wanted to jump into something in the target realm um and just shoot target (coughs) the drive nxt is a great bow for that okay um and then if you wanted an actual target bow that just you know kind of gradually get yourself into the laser is without a doubt the best like entry level target bow with the nf cam system on there it draws insanely smooth and is super forgiving for anyone to shoot whether they're novice or they're an expert okay and and, and for those out there that want to get in get uh, a youngster into archery uh they do have uh, the uprising that the draw weight is adjustable from 12 to 72 pounds so that's definitely a good grow into bow mm-hmm. <clears throat> Definitely, definitely, it's definitely a good grow into bow. I wouldn't necessarily say um, it's something you want to shoot after you kind of are a teenager. You you probably want to jump into something maybe a little bit more technically advanced, but a great entry bow to your point. Well, like you like you said, you're going to start somewhere, and and like everybody, I don't know anybody in this industry that doesn't get the itch after a few years of of, right. Okay, I got to upgrade. Right, especially if you (laughs) especially if you shoot them. Uh, You know, some people out there. The tried and true, they keep shooting their older bows, but then you say, hey, just try it, and they're like, wow, what have I been missing? I know, we've done that with how many people? Right. You know, if somebody, if we get them to the shop, and it's like, well, let's just get one in your draw, draw range here so we can get you out there and just pound some paper with it. And after they shoot the first time, they're like, wow. You know, the technology has, has advanced so much so quickly. And that's, that's one thing, you know, back to your engineers, how quickly that they adapt to something and make things better. It's, uh, it's just simply amazing. It really is how impressive our – it's crazy how impressive our engineers are able to just flip on a dime. Well, like one of our bosses or, you know, like you said, like consumers are, you know, kind of leaning this way or the market's dictating we're going to go this way and how quick and able they are to – 
just produce what we needed, what we need, and it sells. And so it's your real testament to how for our ingenuity, how good they are. Well, and that kind of leads me into the next question about working with John Dudley as well. I mean, when when y'all started that partnership, um, that just the little tiny things. You know, I remember that first day when they made the announcement and they brought the bow out, and you could just see the little tweaks that he did. And everybody's just blown away, you know. It's like, yeah, well, you know, that'd be cool to have on on one of mine, like the, the little kickstand, something as simple as that. Yep, yep, that and the dual burger bowl hunt, uh, button, the fixed cable guard, and yep. So yeah, there's a lot of it's yeah, it's been great. Our partnership with John has been unbelievable. So I can't speak highly of, of what he's brought to the table and what he's been ha- able to do and grow our business and everything. So well, it's been. When we inter- when we interviewed him there live on the on the show floor that day when after a couple hours after they announced it you know he said he goes look I could have went somewhere else and got more money but he talked with Pete and the Pete said come on in tell us what you want and, and they gave him the freedom that he was looking for to help design bows instead of just putting one in his hands hey would you shoot this for us you know yeah so he's been to the factory a couple of times and has met with engineers and kind of goes over some stuff so you know and then um our engineers too so like you know not taking anything away from our engineers or dudley but they definitely work hand in hand it's not necessarily i wouldn't argue that you know one is superior than the other so it's definitely a teamwork kind of makes the dream work ordeal here so well it's that it's that it, knowing what how he communicate what he wants and your engineers being able to pick up on it and bring it to the to his hand of yep. what he's looking for that shows both on both ends right that right. your engineers are really acceptable to what he's te- wanting to to have and he's a good explainer at doing so oh 100% i agree with what you said that's that's it. I pro- that's probably a better way to explain it is how you said it well and they got to have confidence in each other and that right there shows i mean just by yeah. the partnership that they have so that is incredible. Um, I tell you what, we're we're close to here to our last break, so let's go ahead and get that out of the way. And uh, I know we, we've got a couple pictures that uh, you sent to us, and we want to talk a little bit about the hunting side and some of the things that you've uh, you've been out and put an arrow into. So let's do it. All right, let's step outside. We'll take our last break, and we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, last segment of the show, and as we always say, for the people on the podcast, you got to watch the live stream. Make sure you go over to YouTube and catch the replay of it, because in the commercial breaks is when we have the most fun. It is, and you learn some things about people, and now you just wish it's like, great. Yeah, so like he said in the commercial break, he's going to come hunting turkeys with you, and right. you'll find a surprise. Right, so <laughs> tune into the live stream on, on YouTube when I get it out there in a couple of days and check it out. Well, also in the commercial break, we were talking uh, a little bit about his hunting dog. And you said that this is your bird dog, the Weimaraner you have there. Jackson, that's, that's the name of the dog, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, his name okay. is Jackson. So, okay, so what kind of birds do you hunt out there in Arizona? Because we're not familiar no, with that we area. Have, uh, um, doves and quail. So ma- mainly just doves, and uh, it's about to be quail season here, so... Instead of him, necessarily instead of him going and, uh, like, sitting with me and uh, retrieving them, I kind of just need him to flush them, shoot them, and then grab them for me when I can't find them. Gotcha. Okay. Kind of like partridge hunting here in Michigan. Exactly. Okay. He's a, yeah, flush, he's a, fl- a, he's a, he's a flush dog. Yeah, exactly. It's just a little tough because I got him rattlesnake trained, and there's so many bloody rattlesnakes out here that he, sometimes he just does a 30-yard loop around me, and I need him to find birds, but he's avoiding rattlesnakes. So sometimes it gets a little tricky. Nice. Don't want no snakes. And they have a dove season out in Arizona. Yeah, we don't have those in Michigan. Because we have a pretty bird. Yeah, ours are songbirds here. Our doves are songbirds, so we're not allowed to shoot them. But as soon as they fly south and cross the state oh. line into Ohio or Indiana, they shoot them. They change. They they metamorphosize into a game bird. It's amazing how that happens. <laughs> Isn't that- <laughs> well, yeah, so we've got the morning doves and then some white-winged doves. 
and well, another one as well i just i think it's more rare or um than the northern part of the state or down by mexico or something okay well, well speaking of hunting you sent us a couple pics uh we got some deer and uh we got a nice hog here uh wh- wh- where do you want to start with uh, whatever one you got pulled up first we can talk about whichever okay we got a, we got a nice velvet buck here tell us uh, tell us about this Velvet buck. So I think, uh, so I believe that is the deer I just shot on my Utah backpacking hunt. Was up there for about nine days, and uh, what an incredible hunt it was! It was super tough. Everyone going up there told me it was a drought year, so you know, like deer might be minimal, it may not be that big. Um, sure enough, it was super dry, um, but the hunting was great. It took. Um, I think, I believe I killed him on day five and I didn't see, he was the third shooter buck. And when I mean shooter buck, I'm not necessarily trying to shoot a giant, but I kind of want to shoot a mature deer Mm -hmm. or more of a mature deer. He was kind of young, but didn't go that he was the first stock I went on in five days. It was a two and a half hour stock and um, capitalized on the one shot that he gave me. Um, And like I said earlier in the show, out hunting West, you may take shots out past 60 yards and I shot him at 75 and hit him through both shoulders. And, um, like Rut Daniel says, I don't know if you know of him, but mm-hmm. he didn't go 20. So it was pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go 20. Oh. Right. So, so 75 yards. It, was it, what was it warm or were you up in the cool? Yeah, it was actually super warm. So I was at, I think I, I killed him at about 9,000 feet. So the whole backpacking, the whole hunt was at about 8,200 to about 10,000 feet. And we were um, about four miles in. Um, where I killed him was in a different spot. So we were in a completely different area. We were only about a mile. Uh, I think the pack out was two miles, actually. So it wasn't too bad. But yeah, so it was about 70 some degrees every day. So not too cold. Um, they said it was pretty warm for up there but i thought it was amazing so it looks like you had pretty good skies that day look they're, they're crystal clear and blue yeah so the, we had one and a half days of uh we were tented for about three in the afternoon to about nine in the morning the next day just with heavy rain and hail way back in there one day but other than that it was phenomenal hunting clear skies no wind um, nice and cool deer activity everywhere so 75 yards mm-hmm. that's a poke Hey, if you if you if you, you practice, practice it, it, it's it's easy. It's easy. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like and like I said, the the bow. The why I argue it's the best bow, just having the confidence in. I know and shooting out to a hundred yards that this bow holds tight groups. Not you know, oh, I hit a pie plate at a hundred yards. No, this this bow shoots. You know, like. Uh, tennis ball size groups at 100 yards not a pie plate size group so you know it, it, you said that um the very first time after we got back from the shop of setting my bow up i was over at danny's house and we were shooting and it was you know 20 yards okay 30 yards fine 40 50 60 yards still sticking them in in the bullseye you yeah. know talk about confidence builder i mean it's yeah. just amazing you, you're absolutely right you know i haven't stepped out longer distance because we weren't able to shoot that that kind of distance at his house, but uh, well, because we put it in the tree through the trees and the leaves. yeah, you didn't trim the trees high enough. Well, I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I, every PSC I've shot with, uh, I, I had a range at my old house where I could shoot out to 90 yards, and and it's true. It, it just it's such a confidence builder. Yeah, so I mean, I, if I could prefer, I would be you know half the distance closer than 75 yards right but just you know, that's just all that i that i was presented with with the cliff that i was on and where he was at feeding in some timber so were you shooting downhill or uphill i shot him down it's shooting downhill all right so downhill 75 yards didn't go 20 he, no he did not I, he seriously didn't go it was the, i wish the one time i wish i had a gopro or i was a youtuber and could have, could have filmed it <laughs> pretty amazing well, that's awesome and that's a it's a great looking velvet buck i mean a velvet buck is just awesome now you said this is a, about ten thousand feet right i uh, he's probably at about nine right there okay. the top of that peak is about ten thousand that's up behind me i would say okay now as far as the the air i i, I hunted in colorado one time and we were at about i want to say between six and seven thousand feet and for an you know, Midwest guy, Flatlander, it, it took its toll on me. I, you know, how was, how did you adapt to that? I mean, where you're at nor, normally, where you hunt out there in Arizona, are, are you hunting high? Are you hunting low? Did it bother you at all? 
it definitely so i think i had some good fortune on my side because i grew up in the mountains in southern california at about seven thousand feet okay but it, de- it i will say it definitely took me about a day and a half to two full days when to backpacking in because i i do i work out i go to crossfit four or five days a week so i'm in shape and prepared you know physically and mentally but training at altitude is a whole different game it did it definitely kicked my butt for the first day and a half too just just going in with i wouldn't even say the heaviest of packs it was just so out of breath that it definitely took a toll on me the first couple of days and then once i adjusted and got more accommodated to it it definitely seemed as it was easier to go more miles and further each day well danny and i we, we've kind of been on this workout thing for the last two and a half years actually going into year three this month is that right Dan? yep yeah it'd be three years actually last week the 10th the 10th this, this weekend uh with that being said there's something you said that that kind of caught my attention is you said you're mentally prepared as well what did you mean by that so um knowing that i where i hunt and how i hunt it's just knowing i'm gonna be backpacking in so like just being mentally prepared knowing all right i got everything i've talked to everyone i needed to talk to in terms of what to look for what i need to bring in terms of food so just all the small things knowing that you're mentally prepared you know obviously i'm prepared in the fact that i've been shooting and practicing but do i have all the equipment do i have all do i have my 2200 calories that i'm gonna eat every day mentally prepared to go in uh do i know what i'm getting myself into in terms of like rain gear so there's i look at it when i say mentally prepared just kind of the small things uh you know the stuff that could honestly be a huge factor you know if you forgot uh, your steaks or something in your sleeping bag system mm-hmm. or you forgot your water filter and you're four miles in so now it's when you run out of your three liters of water that you packed in you have to pack out instead of being able to filter out everything or your tabs or so just being prepared for everything and, and just going through a mental checklist of that you're ready to go yeah and so and another thing too with it is like i said i didn't go i didn't stock a deer for five days so everyone's got this watches youtube goes on instagram all they see are big deer that are killed in the back country and mm-hmm. for the first four days you know i went into the back country and i saw 70 forks mm-hmm. and you know so it's you just got to be mentally prepared that you, you got to keep after it just you know the, as one of my good friends and guys that shoots for us sam davis said sam davis says predator predators never quit so you, you, they never quit. You just got to stay after it. Well, you probably stand on top of the hills glassing and glassing till the till one that you said, okay, that's the one. And like you said, you saw a deer, just ones that you weren't typically going to go after that you set up in your mind that you wanted to go after for your hunt. Right. Yep. So no, I, I it's it's all it's all how you want to make the hunt, right? Now, so. if you would have been in the, I'm going to shoot the first thing that I see. Okay, you can do that too. I don't. It, it's up to you. It's your tag. Yeah. It's your tag. And that's why that's what I tell everyone, and I tell myself going after deer is that, that am I going to be happy walking up onto it? Do I did I enjoy the hunt so far? Did everything and every deer I've killed, I've you know I've been grinning ear to ear when I put my hands on them. So um, it's just you just got to have fun with it and enjoy it. Speaking of the deer, and the next picture we got up on the screen looks like a mule deer. Mm-hmm. That is a wide, wide rack right there, my friend. Where'd you get that one? <laughs> No, oh, that's a that's a Arizona desert deer I shot in January of this year. Wow. Yep. So the one of uh, one of my spots that I, that I found and that my roommate and I would always go to and um, consistently seeing bucks, seeing deer, and my roommate the second to last day of season, I'm going to throw him under the bus because he knows it. He <laughs> offered to go to a completely different area, a new area we had neither of us had been to. And I was like, I'm going to go back to our same spot. And so I hunted solo that morning, and it was just just wild. I, I watched him get his butt kicked, um, and then he was hopping along. And uh, he was at about 250 yards from me working up um, up this uh, draw, actually, which was really weird compared to what the deer normally did the whole two months we were hunting this area. And I was like, I'm just going to cut him off. I know where he's going. Um, cut him off. And I got to 18 yards. And then when I first saw him again, and then he worked his way to 39 yards, uh, broadside in a perfect opening and double lunged him. Wow. So, yeah, by myself. So it was it was just wild. Yeah, it was lo- wild. Looks like you were shooting carbon there. Yeah, that's the yeah. So I was shooting a carbon at the time. Um, it One, it being cold. Um, two, I was shooting that bow very well at the time. Um before I could get my hands on an EBL, so. Now, it looks like there's a little bit of elevation there behind you. Uh, what mm-hmm. what heights were you hunting at here? 
Oh, that it's it. You know, it's kind of this of a deceiving picture, but that's a uh, in the it's in the desert, so that's got to be four thousand okay. twenty two hundred four thousand. That's still higher than we are here at Michigan. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I right. think we're like at nine hundred feet. <laughs> right. So yeah. So no, that's a, that's an awesome buck. Love the love the rack on that one. And the next picture we got up is you with a pig. Yeah. So that was a super super good time. That was in uh, just outside of Houston, Texas, earlier this year at the end of May. Went out there with some uh, people that shoot for us, uh, met them and filmed an episode of, on TV for our final descent outdoors and um, shot. It was crazy. They said to bring two dozen arrows. So backtrack. So I've been to Texas on two different hog hunts to Texas. And now I'm going to die just talk the S word on every Texan there is that says they have hogs on their land because they don't. Uh, <laughs> two times to Texas to hunt hogs. Never saw a hog. So I was really skeptical to go back to Texas to go hog hunting. Um, but got wind that my man Billy has the hog heaven, um, hog, uh, hog wild adventures. And they said bring two dozen arrows, and I wish I would have brought two dozen arrows because I shot 11 pigs and had to reuse arrows. <laughs> it was insane, guys. It was, uh, there's, I've never, I, we were, I was probably seeing north of 200 pigs a day. Mm. It was on. Was it, did you see him all day long, or was it like morning all day, from sunrise to sunset? Were you walking after him, or yeah, we did. So that one that I shot that the, the, uh, sitting behind there, I shot on a tree stand. Uh, but yeah, we did. We would stalk um, usually midday when they were kind of more just laying out in the sun and not doing anything, and then sit over the feeders and stuff when they're like morning and evenings. Jeez. So so next time you're gonna bring three dozen arrows because yes. You know, but like you said, your previous experience is, is is what led you to believe that right. We're gonna shoot a pig, right? So, and I, you know, I just I just like to give my Texas friends some hard loving. But yeah, there's hogs out there. It's just there's nothing like if anyone out there wants to go hunt hogs, uh, call Billy at Hog Wild Adventures. You can find him on Instagram and everything. It's it's unreal. You it's you're guaranteed to shoot. And when I mean guaranteed, if you don't shoot something, it's just you just. You didn't want to shoot. Yeah, you didn't want. You didn't want to. You didn't pull the trigger. You right. just throw a rock and you're gonna hit pigs. It's so <laughs> much fun. And if you're gonna shoot, you better bring two dozen arrows. Yes, because you're <laughs> it's just. And he's gonna. Billy's gonna tell you to reload. Keep reloading. Oh my gosh. Well, I tell you what. Is, was it all the pictures? That's what I got. Okay, so uh, typically we, you're a new guest, so I can throw these questions at you. End of the show, we're gonna lighten it up a little bit. We learned about. PSE and what you do for PSE and, and your hunting adventures and um, we got a couple of questions we like to ask all our guests. Um, so one of the first things is, uh, so you're driving to your hunting spot or you're driving wherever to go hunting. Uh, what are you listening to on the radio? So I play this one song every time I go out and knock on wood, but I kill a deer every time I listen to this song and like specifically remember i'm listening to the song on purpose hey let me, i'm looking it up for you guys right now so you've got a specific song to kill it yeah. you know bobby's gonna be walking tomorrow playing this right so it's here i'll put it up to the screen i don't know if you guys can see it but it's unapologetically country uh-huh. as hell, party. <laughs> there you go all right so so you're listening to that song to go kill a deer Yes, that that I have to play it every time I go out, just because he references deer hunting in it and stuff, and it just reminds me of stuff that I've done. So, all right, so so you've made it out to your killing spot. You've got your backpack. What's your favorite snack that's in your backpack? Oh, because you can't go hunting snackless. That's like that's a right. hard sin. Uh, so one, I have to pack in coffee, no matter even even though I usually have like my jet boil and make coffee while I'm out there. But if I'm driving somewhere, you know, let's just say I'm on Arizona coffee's a must. And I a hundred percent buy some sort of, or make before I go out every time, like a egg sausage uh, biscuit or breakfast sandwich. I have to have a breakfast sandwich. It's, but I guess then a snack, I always have candy and those honey crisp waffle snack. Uh, I don't even know what they are, but they're like a waffle honey crisp. Thing. Yeah. So you got to have those, huh? Those payday bars are always in my hunting pack, too. Can't go wrong with a payday, my friend. That's yeah, right. So. Paydays are good. I will. I, I got to call somebody out right now. I was out kayaking last week. There was a bunch of us. We were up on Uh-oh. the upper stretches of the Man State, and they were handing out candy along the way. I mean, it was like we were trick-or-treating oh, between, okay. between kayaks. 
Well, Nancy, my girlfriend, she's passed them along, and she she kept the paydays. She didn't give me one. I didn't even know she had them. And after she ate them, she goes, "Yeah, I, I'm. I feel guilty. I got. I got to admit that I didn't give you a payday." So nice. I'm calling her out. I'm calling nice. her out on that. <laughs> That's just wrong. <laughs> That's so wrong. <laughs> All right. Uh, another question. Your favorite type of of whether it be a, a venison meal or you're you're gonna cook Mike and Dan a meal. What kind of game meal would you make us? Oh, uh, we're eating some. We're gonna have some backstrap steaks. We're going to have some veggies, and I'm talking like uh, peppers, you know, like bell peppers. We're 100% going to have a jalapeno dice, like cut split up so you can eat it on top of your steak. And then um, asparagus. I love asparagus, so it's going to be like bell peppers, asparagus, some a nice steak, and you're going to have some rice with it. That's a go-to meal right there. I've not heard anybody ever say that before when we asked them that question. Which one? Well, I mean, they always say back back straps, but everybody's got their own little thing, thing to it. But he went so far as to, you know, with with the extras as well. I'm all right with that. I am too. Sounds good to me. I'm ready to go to Arizona <laughs> for my steak dinner. Right? Um, that's what I'm cooking up. You're coming over. That's what we're having. There you go. And the last question we got for you is, so we've enjoyed your steak. Uh, we're going to sit by the campfire and you're going to tell us a story. Uh, a hunting related or, or something in your life about the outdoors or, or archery, whatever it is that you would want to tell us that really hit you as a story to tell us. Oh, uh, uh, me telling a story. I would definitely, definitely be a, I can contest to this. I'd definitely be a better storyteller if I had a couple lemonades in me. <laughs> Um, and then you did things could just turn for a wild turn. But if I'm just hanging out telling, um, probably that I, I, a photo of a deer I didn't send you is the California state record deer that I should have that he's technically not the state record of is, um, that's a pretty wild story. So, so the, the, the state record that wasn't the state record that wasn't correct there you go he was on the wrong side of the freeway is why he's not the state record there you go (laughs) so there you go that's our questions we typically ask everybody and then i'll slip you an extra 20 and then you can tell me a bobby vargas story yeah and then (laughs) we'll go at it i got so many (laughs) trust me oh we gotta get bobby there to give him the lemonades that he owes him so we can there you go there you go i like it (laughs) Uh, exactly. Oh, I tell you what, man. We've uh, we've taken about an hour, a little over an hour here with you tonight. We appreciate you taking time out of your night. Uh, talk bows, talk hunting, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, hang on, and uh, we're going to wrap up the show. But hang on, and we'll chat right after we get done here. But for everybody that's out there listening, make sure you go over, find Cade over on Facebook, you know, social media pages, give him a like, follow, share. Do the same thing with PSC. We've got a lot of forums of PSC archery. Uh, that we belong to, make sure to do the same for them as well. And go check out their website, too, if you want to check out the bows that are coming. And as we teased, and this, this, stay tuned for the next couple of months. It sounds like PSC is coming out with some more stuff. Tuesday, right? Tuesday is going to be the first reveal? Yep, Tuesday. So everyone stay tuned. Look out Tuesday for a, for a new bow that's coming out. All right, awesome. Good good deal there. So we'll, we'll definitely be uh, sharing some stuff about that coming up as well. And if you're listening to the podcast, go on iTunes, go over, give us a uh, review over there. That helps us. It helps people that support us and like our title sponsor here, PSC Archery Tonight. Uh, it, it just it helps everybody out. We really appreciate that as well. Share the show as well if you could, please. So that's going to do it. Next week, Danny, who do we have on? We got anything scheduled? Next week, we've got, uh, I do believe, Brett King. Brett's coming on next week? Yeah, I think it's, it's after the championship, so I think Brett is on next week. Okay, so next week's a Yamaha week. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have Brett King on, and... Are we doing Wednesday night? No, I, I don't think so. Because I'm going to be out of town Thursday. Well, we'll talk about it after the show. All right. Ready to go. St- stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> so, all right, that's going to do it for us tonight. We'll see everybody again sometime next week. We, is it Thursday? Or no, we won't Wednesday. Be Thursday. Or th- it'll be Wednesday. Wednesday if we're on. Uh, I, and I do believe we have Brett King lined up. All right. That'll do it for us this week, folks. Y'all take care. We'll see you again. This episode was brought to you by PSC Archery, Yamaha Outboards, Better the Hunt, Easy Cut, Packer Max, Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Calls, Limwalker Game Calls, Wild Seasoning, Total Peep, Sunrise Archery, Scent Lock, and Scent Blocker.
Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.